Hi, guys. <laughs> All right, so we are recording. We are ready to go. Um, uh, let me, you guys are really, really getting me with comments. Hold on a second. Let me expand this so I can see. All right. Okay. Okay. No, I didn't even get a chance to catch my breath. And I wish you got, you guys could have seen me. I'm back here like dancing, like, come on, come on, Craig, come on. Okay. Here we go. Let's talk about some sublimation trends, shall we? And I know you guys are going to, I know you want to see the um, sublimation tie dye, which we're going to do. Um, and then I wanted to talk about some of your Q&A stuff first. Um, let me, uh, there we go. Get that out the way. Okay. So, um, so we're going to do sublimation tie dye. Uh, I had a question, the hottest selling item going into the Christmas season. So what I do every year is I Google trends and I Google color trends and I Google art trends and I go on Etsy because Etsy is really good. Their algorithm is really good at putting what is trending at the top. So, and, and not to but just to see kind of like, where's the shift at this year, you know? Um, and so what I see a lot of this year is kind of the same thing I saw a lot of last year, but um, this year it's more bright. So the two Pantone colors of this year are uh, like a light gray and a light yellow. And if you think about it, it's actually kind of like they had this whole story about the gray for the pandemic and the yellow for uh you know hope or so i don't i don't know but anyways the two colors actually look really good together um and did i well i didn't pull, of course i didn't pull that up or did i no i didn't um but that so that's kind of how i you know i think about what's going to happen this year and and kind of forecast what it's going to be and so i'm seeing a lot of florals and i'm seeing a lot of natural things so and also certain things trend all the time. So of course I'm gonna say the linen, right? Because the linen has this really nice rustic natural look. It sublimates beautifully, of course. Um, and it just, you know, it presents well. And there, there's so many options that you can do with the linen, with the pillowcases and just so many things. Um, I think that these bigger camp mugs, these ceramic camp mugs are going to be big this year. And I know one of the questions was about bundling and think about if you give like a camp mug with a, uh, you know, like a linen coaster and a linen bag or something all stuffed in it and wrapped up. I mean, it's, you know, everything matching, looking cute. I think that's, you know, that's what really, really sells. Um, somebody asked me about bleaching. Never done it. Um, our the carpet here is purple for some weird reason, and so maybe maybe I'll try it one time. I might try it. I like this question. How quickly are trends changing in sublimation? So they change. They can change. It, it comes in shifts. So there's some things that are eternal, like mugs, you know, mugs are always going to be there. And then there's some things that kind of shift generationally, you know, um, and then also yearly. So going into the pandemic last year, it turned a lot of people um, into, like I said, more, more natural things, more sustainable things, um, you know, more locally owned things. So, um, it's hard to say how quickly they change because I could come out with a product or you could come out with a product tomorrow and it is like the next big thing and everybody wants it kind of like the skinny tumblers. So, um, you know, okay. Who can we contact if we have a suggestion for a new blank substrate? You can contact marketing at condi.com. That's a good one. Um, Promoting for specific seasons or holidays. Um, 
That's interesting. I would always go. So, you know, you know, it, there's a sweet spot because if you go too long, then it, you're just going to have products sitting there. But if you don't go long enough, then people are going to buy from other people. So I watch the retail stores. Their strategy is pretty good. Um, and it's very in your face, but um, you know, they usually have a pretty good idea of all of that. Um, what wrap do I use for the cookie jars? If you're talking about these, I use the SF-129. Um, oh, okay. Well, every, with everyone jumping into sublimation, how do you set yourself apart? This is one of my favorite questions you look different. So a couple of the things we're gonna do today, we're gonna do the tie-dye um, t-shirt. I think I've perfected the method, even though I haven't tried it yet, of course, but I think I know how, what I did wrong last time. Um, and then finding things like the textured chalkboard, we're gonna do one of those today. And I think those are like, those are killer because to be able to put an image, so this right here, you know, is a chalkboard. And once again, it has that like really cute natural pattern, but then it's also a chalkboard and it erases clean and you just, it's, it's super cool. So, you know, and then not only that, like really great artwork and perfecting your technique. Um, everybody's doing the skinny tumblers, everybody. But if you put something like incredibly cool on it that somebody's really gonna want, um, you know, work with a local artist put their stuff on the tumblers. Um, you know, there are a lot of talented people out there that aren't selling their artwork because they don't have a medium to put it on. So, you know, if you're not a great artist, work with people who are. What size is that chalkboard? I think that's 12 by 18. And guys, just so you know, um, all of our textured, most of our textured stuff is on sale. And of course, free shipping over $200. Now, some of the larger panels of the textured material, like the 20 by 30, 16 by 20s, something like that, like those aren't free shipping because they have to be crated, but free shipping over $200 and you get a Christmas in July box, which is fabulous. Um, what is my favorite trend? The newest one I find, honestly. Um, I really like the chalkboard right now. And I'm actually super stoked about the, uh, uh tie-dye just that's funny is the award market starting to pick back up absolutely sports are back open um I, i've seen more family members in the past month than i've seen in the past probably five years so yes family reunions get togethers like it's jumping it is the perfect time are there different inks needed for hard and soft substrates nope not at all tips for sublimation on vinyl Whew. Well, I'm going to skip that one. Can we request you to come to our city and do a workshop? It depends on the city. Um, no, I don't think uh, David Gross would let me do that. But you know, that's a really good idea. Maybe we'll post one one day or something. Okay. What is the best way to try and stay on the trend? All right. This is what I wanted to get to. So I want to go to a couple of web pages for you guys. So this is not this page, this is the Hoover page. So this is Etsy.com. Everybody knows Etsy.com, but look at what's trending. Wall decor, linen clothing, party supplies, wedding, barware. Uh, I don't know how to say that, but jewelry. And, you know, and then from here, look at some of the designs like hummingbirds. Um, the colors, so the the oranges and the patterns, um, you know, these are the things that are trending right now. And when we talk about, you know, like, I mean, this is very minimalistic stuff, but it also has kind of a maximalistic feel to it. So I'm, I'm glad that these came up because I also want to talk about 
um, some art that's trending right now. So basically what I did is I just did a Google search and I said, hey, what art is trending in 2021? And it gave me all of these really great things. So the first thing we have here is abstract psychedelia. So this is, you know, stuff from the 70s, but it's come back and people absolutely love it. They love it. Um, you know, here's a couple of good, other good, really good examples. Weird, I know, but weird cells. We talked about setting yourself apart. This is how you do it. Look strange. I'm with it. Um, some more. I, I actually, I did this uh, at Sublimation Summit and put it on a pillow that I absolutely love. Still have it. I like this, the symbol revival. So just really simple, you know, black and gray and line art kind of, uh, you know, symbolism, uh, really clean lines. Thing, like, things like this are super popular. Uh, I see it all the time and it's eye catching. You see something like that and you really, really like it. Retro futurism. I all have always loved this. And if actually, if you look behind me here, um, you can see my iron giant, which is a great, great, great example of retro futurism. Uh, this is, you know, wildly trending uh, just in different ways it can be implemented. Uh oh, no, I don't want to pop up trying to teach class. Surrealism. I like this too. Um, kind of like in like very MC Escher-ish, you know, like I, I dig this style and I think that other people really like this style too. It's, it's very popular nowadays and it's easy. And, you know, you have people on Fiverr that can do things like this for you. Authentic representation. Another huge one that's been trending lately. I like this. I think you could do that with white toner printer. Um, <laughs> the irreverent characters. I kind of like these. I love this right here, the sushi. I think that's really cute. Um, anyways, I could go on. There's, you know, a comic and pop art. This is huge, wild, just crazy. Um, you know, there's all kinds of, obviously there's a lot of art, but you can look at things like this and kind of get an idea of, of where, you know, what your market is going to look like. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about, I'm sure you guys have, if you've ever watched one of my classes, I promote this website um, like I own it. I absolutely love it. Um, you can come in here and you can uh, find matching colors. But another thing that I really, really like is the explore category, because what this does is it shows you what color palettes are trending right now. I mean, how helpful is this? So not only do you see what's popular and what other people are using, but you also have the full spectrum to work with. And the great thing about this is you can view it and it gives you the hex values, the CMYK values. Um, it, it gives you all kinds of things. Let's see, open and generator. That's what I want to do. So yeah, you can have, um, you know, it gives you the web value. It can give you the hex value. It can give you the RGB value, the CMYK value. Uh, it's, it's, this is, I love it. Absolutely love it. So C O L L no C O O L O R S dot C O coolers dot com. All right. Back to me. So let's let's see my chat. Ooh, Marie says she makes clients go there first and make her a color chart. Nice. That's beautiful. Okay. Um, do trending colors work for all generations? Mm, what a loaded question. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's a really, you just shook me. I, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? 
Do you think that, um, do you guys, that's a really interesting, okay, hold on. All right, guys, I have a question for all of you. The question is, now I gotta find it. Do trending colors work for all generations? So are color trends generational? Everybody says no. So they don't work. Yeah, I think older likes tradition too. But what you see nowadays is you see a lot of, you know, you see a lot of traditional things that are coming back, like the blue um, porcelain, you know, the fine line porcelain. Uh, that's a really big trend nowadays. Um, you know what I think? I think good art is eternal, honestly. That's what I think. That's what I think. And I think if you can have good art, with colors that are appealing to people, the colors, colors trend for a reason. And I think everyone's perception changes over time, whether you're old or you're young. So, you know, of course now is my 86 year old grandmother gonna like the psychedelic stuff? She might, I don't know, granny's kind of crazy. No, I doubt it, but you know, I mean, you also, I guess you do, you know, you have to know your audience too, um, you know, I, teenagers or young children are not going to want some, you know, really simple complex or simple line drawing. They're going to want something else. So I guess it's more know your audience. 70s avocado green nightmare. I dig it. I'm not going to lie. My old kitchen is done in 70s avocado green. So, okay, let's do something. Let's do something. So we're going to do a chalkboard first okay i've got what i've got 40 minutes 30 minutes you guys know i don't have i don't can't tell time okay so i have a sheet of paper here printed on my sawgrass sg 1000 on my spp 13 by 19 paper and i have my textured aluminum which is 11 by 14 and I don't know the part number because Bo didn't give it to me. So everything that goes wrong today, just so you guys know, it's Bo's fault. I also don't know how long to press it for, but I'm going to guess a minute and a half and we'll just see how that goes. Okay. I'm sorry, Pam. <laughs> Y'all know I'm not right. Okay. I get it from my grandmother. What can I say? All right. So let's go to Corel real quick. And I've got, I've got all these chats open and um, let me get them out the way. Look, oh, oh, Bo coming through with the U4881. Are you sure that's right? Because I think that's, I don't think that's right, Bo. You better make, you better make sure. <laughs> Poor Bo. Uh-oh. Oh, well, okay, let me get this out of the way. Let me get you guys out of the way and then I'll start. <laughs> okay, so y'all got Corel. Here's Corel. And here is the artwork that Bo made me. Um, no, okay, so Nancy. Oh, and Nancy, I've missed you. I've been wondering where you've been. So we're calling it a chalkboard because we can use this material to create a chalkboard on. And I'm going to show you a couple of different examples. So I've got. All this is here is just a black image. It's just, it's RGB 000, okay? So I am going to um, line my text up. Well, and just kind of, now remember, anything that goes wrong is completely Bo's fault. For instance, the the's not, not matching up, that's Bo's fault. Uh, so what I do, so, okay, well, I'm going to give Bo credit here. So what he did, let me just put these guys down here to the bottom. So what Bo did is he took this color in the shirt with the eyedropper tool and made that this color. So it's going to match really well. Okay. So now bring that up there and I know it doesn't match, but that's okay. We're going to group it together. All right, and now it's ready to print. So just like that, okay. Now, when we print it, you, can, you couldn't see my curl screen? 
Could you guys not see, could y'all see my Corel screen? Did I just do all that? I okay. saw it. All right, okay, thank you. I was like, man, I mean, I can, I can do it again. Okay, so that, I come out with this, right? It's beautiful, great. And I've got my bow, what'd you say it was? You 4881, how, what is it? One minute and 15 seconds. Okay, so this has got a lot of ink on it. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, I'm going to hang it under my open heat press for a couple of seconds. Got to dry the transfer. Two minutes. <laughs> don't you yell at me, Bo. All right, you don't have to do it for very long, just kind of long enough to get any kind of moisture out of it. Two minutes, two minutes, thank you. You just walked in and gave me a mean face. All right, I got a piece of protective paper on the bottom. Now I'm gonna line it up. I wonder if you guys can see, you can actually see here in the middle, see how that it's kind of got like a, like a faded look. That's actually still where the ink is a little wet. Um, that's fascinating. So it really does dry the transfer. We're gonna go with it though, because the one good thing about this textured material, it is, it is very forgiving. So, but if we were doing like the gloss or the clear, I would definitely um, uh, dry it a little longer. So, nope, we're gonna tape on the sides. We're gonna tape on the sides so I can show you guys my sneak peek technique. Ooh, sneak peek technique. Okay, tech the paper on the bottom. We're gonna flip it over. So image face down, product face up. I'm going to use my poly poplin fabric, which is here. Okay. So if you guys watched Mickey do the large format earlier, we use this on Chromalux panels because it um, uh, the moisture escapes better through this than it does through the butcher paper. Um, you can see I've used this a lot a lot, a lot. Uh, as long as the entire substrate is covered with transfer paper, this none of this ink will go back onto your substrate. So what substrate am I using? I am using the 12 by 18 textured metal. All right, we're gonna do this, Bo says two minutes. With a, I'm, I like to use a medium heavy pressure with the textured material, just so it kind of like gets down into the texture a little bit. That's not, that's not what I was talking about. Okay. And we go just like that. Um, yeah, it, it actually doesn't get on the top platen either. So um, I have completely messed up somehow. Oh, well, I'm all over the place. Okay. Oh, Tracy, I hope your son's okay. Well, thank you, darling. Um, there's my chat. All right, so, so what size press? This is the George Knight DK20S. This is a 16 by 20 heat press and it is on sale today. So say again what the blackboard plate is. So all it is, is it's just our textured material from Unisub. So I'm um, from Chromalux. So this right here, is a piece of uh, textured hardboard. And mm, it works best with Windex. Well, that's not gonna work and water, but um, I do have water. And it just kind of, it just comes right off. 
Now, like I said, it work it works best. It comes off best with water and Windex, but it just comes right off. And then you just write back on it. So this is just sublimated. It's just sublimated on black. And then I get my gloves because metal is hot. Um, I do have a, well, not me personally, but yeah, we do have a Pinterest board. Um, I don't, I think it's Condi Systems, Condi Systems Inc. Okay, so let me show you guys my trick. So to make sure that it has sublimated completely, let me zoom in so you guys can see this. Um, so before I pick it up off the press, I'm gonna check. Make sure I have all my ink off there, check. And then I can just rip my paper off. And look, all that, all that ink came off. It looks really good. It's very hot. We're gonna let it cool down because you, okay, one thing that I did notice, if you were to write on this right now with it being hot, there's something like some kind of oil or something in the chalk and it will stain it. So you have to let this completely cool before you put any chalk on it. But I think it's, I like it. I like it. Let me see if I can. Uh... Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Anyways, it's cute. So. And I've got some chalk, we'll play with that in just a second. All right, now for the moment that I have been waiting on. Can you use a white marker on it? Yeah, yeah, yes. I had somebody ask me about paint markers. You could totally use paint markers. Um, yeah, so, but now on normal Chromalux, excuse me, on normal Chromalux, uh, you wouldn't because it actually has like an anti-graffiti coating on it, but this textured material does not. So you can't even, I mean, you can't take a Sharpie to the Chromalux because it just comes right off. No, I, no, not a Sprite Pinterest board. My, actually, okay, my Pinterest board, per my personal Pinterest board is like all yoga and, um, and and like Pilates stuff, but so does the press have an interchangeable bottom platen? Um, it does have bottom platen heat that you can get that's extra. Oh, and you can also do like smaller platens for like sleeves and caps and things like that. Okay. Um, why are chalkboards in? I don't know. So that's a really 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 great point. Um, there's something that David Gross says all of the time, and it is don't let your personal opinions get in the way of making money because, you know, you might not get it. I'm, I might not get it, but it's selling. It's just like the bleach thing. Like for a while, the bleach thing was struggling. Now all of a sudden it's like everybody wants those bleach shirts. You know, you don't question it. You just, just go with it. Um, there's some products that we'll get and I'm just, okay, I'm David, please don't be mad at me. But for instance, the, um, the felt glasses, the little sublimation glasses, I was like, no way. And yeah, we can't keep them in stock. Wait, I've got a pair. Let me show them to you. Um, and you know, it's, it's, and it's just because it's not my thing. Like I'm not a photo booth person. I don't see <laughs> <laughs> you know, but they sell. So don't let your personal opinions get in the way of making money. All right, on to our next thing. Okay, tie-dye shirt. So I have a vapor apparel shirt. Let me get this off the table. Just set it on the carpet. Somebody asked me if this is double-sided. Yeah, so all Chromalux metal is um, double-sided. The only thing, and I don't know if you guys will be able to see it because it's really, really faint, is it does have 
I don't know if you can see that right there, but it does have like a little stamped logo in it. But what we always talk about, and I'm glad you brought that up is, you know, because you can print both like both sides of the metal at the same time. So always I talk about branding your products, like put your company logo on the back of it. Um, come on camera, there we go. And, you know, so this is the Chromalux EXT and it has, you know, it has the same little Chromalux branding on it, but you can still sublimate to it. So really cool. Okay, so this is what I've learned from a few people who are like, you did it wrong. And I was like, well, yeah, I know I did it wrong. Okay, so I've got my shirt, right? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of parchment paper and I'm gonna make the parchment paper about the size of my center design, okay? So this is my center design. Bo made this, he thinks I'm trendy. So, and then I'm just gonna kind of cut my parchment paper to about this size, maybe even a little smaller, just because I do kind of want some of it to go in there, like some of the, um, the tie dye to go in there. So, All right, so I've just got this little piece, right? And I mean, I guess you could use butcher paper. I don't, I don't really know. Uh, the brand of the shirt, this is a Vapor Basic shirt. So this is a 4767M because it's a medium. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, this is where my center, let me see, do I have a top camera? I can, I can get one in just a second. Top cam, hey yeah. Wait a second, hold on. Sorry, guys. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. So I've got my piece of parchment paper, and it's a it's a little bit you know it's about the size of this. Okay. So I'm gonna where I want my parchment my my chest design to go. I'm gonna tape up my parchment paper. And so that's basically gonna stop any of the tie dye for getting, from getting underneath the main design. So we'll see. If it doesn't work, we all know whose fault it is. That's right, it's Bo's fault. Okay, so now last time I did the front first and then when I did the back then when I did the back um the front kind of double imaged and so the back was cleaner than the front and I don't want that this time um I want the front to be cleaner than the back I really so I saw somebody just kind of scrunch it up but I don't want to do that so I'm going to do the twist method but first what I'm going to do is lay down a piece of protective paper to make it easier for me to transfer my shirt from the table to the heat press. Cause normally I would do this on the heat press, but I want you guys to kind of see it. I love tie dye, I'm a hippie. I don't know if you guys know that about me. Okay. And I wanna start it like, I guess right about here. And you just kind of, I mean, it's like, that's it, okay? That's whatever, that's cool. All right, so we're just gonna put it on the platen. And we're gonna pre-press it just to kind of flatten it out. And so I've already worn the shirt that I, that I made the other day. And what I noticed about it is that it, you cannot see, um, sorry guys, you cannot see the, um, 
Uh, you can't see you. Okay. So you would think, because I'm, I'm about to use a lot of pressure that you would be able to see um, the press lines in it, but the press lines almost act like they almost give it a little bit uh, more character because it kind of adds depth to where your design is, if that makes any sense. I, but then the second time I wore it, I didn't see any press lines. So it was like they, you know, I washed it and dried it twice and the press lines were just gone. Okay. So can't really see it. It just looks like this blob of stuff. I completely messed this camera up. <laughs> ah, there we go. Yeah, you still can't see it, but you get it. There's a amorphous blob right here. Okay, so Bo made me these two like really trippy patterns. I don't know what they are. And I really, I think if you're gonna do this, oversaturate it so it looks really good. So I like, you know, because at first he gave me these and I like them, but I think that darker color is going to work better. So, all right. So I'm just going to pro spray it and just kind of position everything under there. Cover it with protective paper. Oops, definitely too long. Okay. And we'll see how it goes. Are you are you cracking up at me, Pam? I try, I try. Um, okay, let's talk about some other trends. So obviously skinny tumblers, whatever, uh, you know it. Um, stacked metal, you guys know I love the stacked metal. And this is gloss clear in the back and matte white in the front, which I think gives like a really cool effect. Um, very, very high perceived value, uh, very high value. Um, same with this one. Now this is, I'm going to this camera anyways, it doesn't matter, you guys can see it. So this is a gloss in the back and then a gloss in the front, but a gloss clear. Okay. I wish y'all could see it. Um, like, because right now it looks really cool. Okay. You know what? It, I didn't get as much coverage as I think I would have wanted to get. I kind of maybe, mm, but I mean, it's okay. It's still really, really cool though. I mean, you know, and then I don't know. I got to figure out how to put more surface area under there. Okay, so now let's do the front. But so the way we're going to do this is we're going to tie dye the front and then we're going to take the paper off. And then after we take the paper off, we're going to uh, sublimate this part, I think. Now I'm confused. All right, I want to start back here. Maybe scrunch it a little less. You I mean, but you think, you know, so the only thing I'm worried about is, um, is, is it not fitting uh, underneath the transfer? I think that, yeah, okay. Well, we all, we are all learning together. Oh, and by the way, I've been watching you guys interact on the app and I've also been interacting with interacting with you. You guys are fantastic. What a great community. Like, no, there's nobody like 
you know, I mean, because technically we're all competitors with each other or you are all competitors with each other. And I have not seen anything but helpfulness and just encouragement. And you guys are awesome. So thank you. Sprite, you can always hit that twice with two different papers. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, because it doesn't really matter, right? Okay. Think. You can also take your other sheet and when you put your last image on, cut out some pieces. That's true. I've done yeah. that. And, um, and I saw somebody do one and it was really cute. And they did, um, they did the sleeve. So like it was full sleeves and then the rest of it was tie dye. And I thought that was really cute. Um, what did you spray on the transfer? It's a spro pro spray. It's a tacky spray to keep it. So when I open the uh, heat press, it doesn't move because if it moves, it's going to ghost, which I guess it doesn't matter if it ghosts. We're saying we're going for in, imperfect here. I did you. Yes, Barb, I used the cover sheet. I will say when I'm wrong. What is the sale price on? Oh, I. No, I didn't, Barb. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't do it. <laughs> well, I was so I was so righteous too. I was like, I did it. No, I did not. <laughs> I did not even once. But that's okay. <laughs> oh Lord. Um. <laughs> that's right. I didn't. I did not start a fire today. So at least not yet. Don't forget to join me for my oven class tomorrow where we might be burning Condi down. Okay, that turned out cute though. I like that. It's still a little more sporadic, but I like the idea. Ooh, but that pattern though. Y'all look. But I like the idea of um, using two transfers, but like where it, oh, it's just so pretty. It's just so very pretty. Okay, so. Boy, I was like, of course I put a cover sheet on. Yeah, I put a, no, no, I didn't. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Oh, now I get why it says trendy bow because we're doing trends. Sorry. It's been a wild few weeks. All right, our last press. And oh, somebody asked for time and ooh, time and temperature. I am doing the vapor basic shirts are really for, forgiving, but you want to go about 390 for 50 seconds. And if you guys noticed, I ripped. Oh, you can't see me. Can't see me. Can't see me. Um, uh, I ripped the edge of the paper because that kind of softens that hard line. Should you let it cool completely before doing the center? Probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, somebody asked about these. So I just used, uh, I used, uh, it's a, uh, a wood block from Unisub, a mounting block. It has double-sided adhesive on one side and I use E6000 on the other side and I let it sit for 72 hours. Okay, so let's go back to my chalkboard. It's cool now. Oh Lord. Well, ain't that just the cutest thing you've ever seen in your life? So there we go. We got my shirt. It says trendy. Yeah, I think I could work on this more and perfect it a little more, but all in all, it's still pretty cool. Okay, so let's um, 
let's write on my chalkboard. All I have is white chalk because I, I gave the rest of it to um, Curtis Benson from Universal Woods to take to a trade show. So we'll blame Curtis. Roxanne, if you're on here, yell at him for me. That's his wife. Okay, what should we write? There we go. Just be nice. That's all. That's all I want. Be nice to Bo. <laughs> Bo deserves it. No, I'm just kidding. You know, I feel like you guys are like, oh, she really doesn't like him. I only mess with the people that I really like. So if you hear me, I'm not I'm like, oh my gosh, I love them. They're so great. Chances are. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, no, so somebody asked, okay, like, can I just, so yeah, if I wanted to, I could come in with like some colored chalk and like, like, give the daughter some pink hair, you know, or like, give the dad a pink mustache. Oh, I actually like that. That's a good look. Yeah, I mean, so like you, you know, it's it's a chalkboard. Okay, it's not that good of a look, but he looked. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, I got two minutes. Do I have any questions? No. All right. Well, guys. Oh, Ashley's tomorrow. That's uh, not tomorrow. Ashley's here in a minute. Um, that's going to be really cool because uh, she's going to be doing the artist free markers make and take. And it's always a great time with Ashley. So um, how do you do it all? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> what's the sale price on the DK20S? Mm. I don't know. Hold on, I'll tell you. The DK20S is normally $1,680. Oh, $1, it is currently on sale for $1,612.80. So that is about $70 off. No, sixty dollars off. Seventy. I don't. Seventy-eight dollars. Seven. I don't know. I, I don't do math. I don't do time. I can do art. So, are these sessions recorded? Yes, they are recorded. Uh, Bo will be uploading them very soon. Um, and that's all the time. Oh, the heat gloves. Um, a very good friend sent these to me, but I did get these crazy pink ones off of Amazon that work really well. I don't know where they are, um, go figure. But uh, they also work very well, so. Uh, what do you use to erase the chalkboard? I just use, actually, I just use like cloth, like so an old, like an old shirt, and I'll use Windex, and it just comes right off. It comes right off. You can use water, but the Windex really gets the residue off of it. So, and I don't have any, but I do randomly have Dawn. So, okay. All right, guys. Y'all are the best. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Well, actually, I'll see you in just a second. <laughs> Bye.